Hi everyone, this is Frank Baudin from Cosmos and I would like to show you today a demonstration of dynamic service chaining based on application identification. Today, service chain in networks are defined by a chain of appliances uh, where the traffic has to go through all elements most of the time. There are some tricks based on L2, L3 which are not very accurate uh, in order to bypass some stages for give a given kind of traffic but uh, layer 2 layer 3 identification is most of the time inefficient as for instance on port 80 today TCP port 80 you have a lot of protocol not only HTTP so you may send in your HTTP proxy something which is not in HTTP generating a waste of resources so dynamic service chaining dynamically steer traffic in the proper chain of processing and one chain of processing is dedicated for a kind of application for instance HTTP, video, FTP, etc. This is what we are going to show you today in this demonstration. So in our setup we have a client, a server establishing traffic. This traffic is going through a service chain composed of firewall, rate limiter, load balancer and parental control. And this and the, the traffic is classified and steered by an open flow compatible vSwitch. So open vSwitch in this demonstration uh, with a Cosmos SAM plugin, Cosmos DPI plugin that classify the application. And the whole service chain is configured by the SFC orchestrator. So how does it work? The SFC orchestrator gets the definition of the chains. So chain number one is firewall plus load balancer, chain number two is rate limiter and parental control, etc. And get the mapping of which application should go in which chain. So HTTP chain one, uh, FTP chain one, SSH chain two, etc. So once you define the so you define first uh, the chains and application mapping and you define which VNF are in which chain at the SFC orchestrator level and the SFC orchestrator push the configuration and configure the different elements of the chain in particular the open flow vSwitch. At the vSwitch level the configuration look like this. So you have for a given application, you have the chain identification and the first hop of the chain. The application, the application is sent to a, to a chain and the chain is identified by a TOS. So the incoming packet TOS value is changed in order to reflect the chain value. So for instance, HTTP traffic will have a TOS of 4 and send to firewall. And then the firewall will see that for Try for the chain number 4, so packet with the TOS 4, so it will do its firewall job and if the packet pass, the next hop is the load balancer. Let's have, a, let's have an example with an HTTP traffic uh, going through firewall and load balancer, chain number 4. So, the HTTP request is coming from the client to the server. Cosmos, uh, uh, Cosmos DPI engine analyze the traffic and say, OK, this is HTTP. HTTP, so this is toast number 4, next up is firewall, so thanks to OpenFlow rules configured by the SFC orchestrator in the, uh, the vSwitch, the packet has an updated toast and sent to the firewall. The firewall process the packet, let it pass through, send back to the switch. Destination is load balancer, so there is no more DPI analysis there, it's just regular switching. Packet is sent to the load balancer, OK. That's uh, toast number four. Destination is exit of the chain. OK, back to the switch, exit of the chain, back to the server. Now, let's start the demonstration. So we're going to first create the chains. So we are going to create four chains, HTTP, video, SSH, and FTP, FTP data. So two applications in one chain, because you can have multiple applications in one chain. So uh, first hop for first Hop for HTTP will be firewall, second will be load balancer, for video just rest limiter, and firewall for SSH and FTP data. These chains are configured at the SFC orchestrator level via a REST API or command line interface. So today 
I will, I will show you the command line interface. So you define the chains with the following command. So you define the HTTP chain with two VNF, firewall load balancer, video, rate limiter, etc. Then you load the configuration and the configuration is because it can take some time to load the application. And then you activate the configuration and the, the packet behavior is changed at this time. Okay, so let's start first open this switch with DPI. So DPI is enabled on port, on client port and on server port. So input of the chain, exit of the chain. So this is a regular open vSwitch with a patch in order to load Cosmos SAM. So this patch is available uh, on uh, DPDK OVS mailing list, for instance. And uh, this patch uh, apply also on regular open vSwitch, which is the case in this demonstration. So you see that the DPI engine parameter here. So that's the DPI plugin and port one and two. Now, let's start the VMs. So in this demonstration, all of the VNF are fake application. They are not real VNF and uh, client server. Everything is uh, all, all the elements uh, except the vSwitch which run in the hypervisor are VMs. So let's follow the client boot. The client is booted. And for all VNF, so we have uh, all VNF send the window with a TCP dump on their processing interface in order to see what's going on during the demonstration. So let's start also the capture window for the rate limiter. So okay. So we have the firewall, the rate limiter, the load balancer. And before starting the traffic, okay, so we configure so we first, so we configure the SFC orchestrator and then we ask the SFC orchestrator to push the configuration to the different elements. So all the commands are scripted. Okay. And then you see that, okay, so the firewall load balancer are updated. So the configuration is activated and you see that you have a lot of uh, of objects which are created because you have a database behind. Okay, so now let's check that uh, HTTP chain is in place. Uh, okay, so HTTP is going through firewall and load balancer and the is identified by toast number four. This is correct. Let's check with SSH. So zero XC, which means 10 in decimal, okay, only on firewall as expected, and then FTP. Okay, so as expected, 16, 10 in hexadecimal. Now, let's say, okay. I want to rate limit the FTP. So I want to add the rate limiter in the chain 16. So how to do that? So at the orchestrator level, so you, you just update your chain definition by adding a new VNF. You load in the chain, you load the configuration, and then you have to activate uh, the, the the configuration. We have a, a mechanism of rollback, which will, won't be demonstrated here, but you can switch back to the previous configuration. Okay, so update the chain. So we update the chain. So so this is the former definition of the chain. I didn't dump the new the new uh, the new configuration. Let's check the new configuration. So now we should go also to the rate limiter. Okay, this is what we have. 
Excellent. Now, we are going to... Uh, now, let's say I want to deploy a new, a new VNF. So I want to deploy a parental control and I want to insert it into HTTP and video chain. So I have to install my, VN my new VNF and I have to update the configuration like this. I create the VNF, so the VNF is added to the SFC orchestrator database. I update the chain, the chains, I load and, and I activate. Let's see that. So first let's boot the third VNF. Okay, and let's uh, let's have a, a capture interface. Okay, now uh, no, we want to go to the client. So let's uh, let's get uh, a web page. Server. Okay, so I booted it, but I did not update the SFC orchestrator, so let's do that. And VNF, so that's why. Okay, it's added here. Okay, so the VM is booted. Okay. Okay, so chain number four, firewall, load balancer, Parental control, as expected. And let's finish with the video. So, let's stream a video. Okay. So, Okay, I've got video and the video chain number eight load rate limiter load balancer only. Okay, good. And then let's see some statistics. So um, video application uh, is zero x FB. So and zero x FB application. So these are the open for rules of the V switch. And here you see that uh, okay, that's the beginning of the flow. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. So today you had a demonstration of dynamic service chaining based on application identification. So dynamic, you can update the configuration of the chains, add VNF, remove VNF from chains, and uh, in order to have optimal service chain within your network. Thank you very much and uh, see you soon on YouTube. Goodbye.